Hi, I'm Katie, and this is Obscure Sports on Fast Forward. Fencing has been around for centuries and is one of the original modern Olympic sports. Fencing isn't very commonly practiced here in the States, but there are still people who practice it. Here in Lincoln, there is actually a fencing club. My name is Christian Anderson. I'm one of the coaches here at the Lincoln Fencing Club. I've been fencing for over 20 years, 22 years. Sword work has been around since the dawn of time, but the um, actual fencing from what we have kind of come to um, has kind of started back with the, the Royal Crusades, uh, the, Holy, the Holy Wars. So those crusades ended up ending, and then everyone went back to their homes. They, they decided that they needed to kind of keep their skills sharp, and they needed to keep them fresh. And so they opened up these things called sows. They're like kind of modern-day dojos. They kind of would meet in the basements of, like, bakeries or shoe shops or whatever. And these men would get together, and they would kind of work on their hand-to-hand -hand combat, they'd work on their, their knifing skills, and definitely their, their fencing skills. And eventually what that would then happen was once they wanted to figure out how good they actually got, they would kind of walk around town with these swords on their belts and the sides, and they would kind of run into people and bump into people, and arguments would happen, and they would settle these disputes with the sword. Um, what was commonly called as duel to the death. They would meet the next morning at dawn and then they would duel to the death and you would have these men go at it. And if for some reason you were to die, you were wrong. And if you were to win, you were right. Uh, probably not the most official way of deciding whether someone was wrong or right, but it definitely settled the, the dispute. You had one winner and one loser. With a dueling to the death, what would eventually happen was people were dying and you'd have um, your generals and some of your commanders and your armies, they were dying. So the kings and queens of these various countries eventually kind of settled on this thing that was called duel to first blood. And you would meet that next morning at dawn and instead of dueling to the death, you would duel to first blood. And then from there, you know, you would have these duels to first blood. But how was that really preparing you for the next war, the next battle and the royalty and the upper class and the nobility, they decided, well, that's not really preparing me. And they brought along this weapon called the foil. It's a little bit lighter. You still had to score with the tip of your blade, um, but you had to do it in your torso. And you would hit somewhere in your torso, which usually means you're hitting a vital organ, whether it's a lung or a kidney or a heart or whatever it might be. And then uh, the third weapon of modern fencing is the saber. And that derives from Hungarians storming into battle. It is a slashing weapon. You can use the tip, but you can use the entire side of the blade. Now that you know more about fencing history, tune in next week to Obscure Sports on Fast Forward to learn more about fencing itself.